The oscillator section is the first stage of most analog synthesizers. This section might be labelled VCO, voltage controlled oscillator. It might be labelled DCO, digitally controlled oscillator. It might be labelled waveform. It might be labelled mixer or it might be labelled oscillator. An oscillator generates a signal which rises and falls. As it does this, over time it creates a wave. And this wave is the first part of our sound before we start to move through the different sections of our synthesizers. The way in which the oscillator moves up and down defines the shape of the wave and the tone or the texture of the wave. So if the oscillator moves up and down in a steady manner like this, it creates a triangle wave, which in theory looks like this and generally would sound something like this. If the oscillator moves down slowly and up quickly, like this, over time it creates a sawtooth wave that looks like the teeth of a saw. In theory the wave looks like this and it sounds like this. If the oscillator steps up and down suddenly then it creates what we call a square wave which would look a bit like this in theory it would look like this and it would sound like this if the oscillator moved up and down very erratically to random different positions very rapidly it would create a white noise wave and a white noise wave would sound like this. But let's look and listen at these waves in more detail. So the mini log sawtooth wave sounds like this. And if we look at the oscilloscope here, we can see that it has a slight slope and then some small high frequency detail at the intersection. The Arturia Microbrute sawtooth wave is very similar. You can see again that as the sawtooth falls there's a bit of high frequency detail there, there's a bit more than there is from the mini log. And if we slow that wave down we can see that in a bit more detail. The TT303 sawtooth wave is quite different however. As you can see it's much more rounded than the other two sawtooth waves. We can look at that one in kind of slow motion again. If we move to the triangle wave we will see that the triangle waves again have slight curves to them and they're not rigid up and down lines. This is the mini log triangle wave. So you can see there's a slight slope here and a slight curve. There's also a tiny little bit of high frequency detail at the peaks. 
which if we use the wave shape control that is the point at which the wave is folded back down again. The microbrute has a similar feature with its triangle wave. The TT303 base spot doesn't have a triangle wave but it does have a, a square wave. So if we look at the TT303 square wave, you might expect to see it stepping up and down and up and down. But what we actually see is this. The mini log square wave is more like what you'd expect to see. It steps up and then down and up again. The microbrute square wave is quite similar again to the mini log square wave. Both the mini log and the microbrute allow you to change the shape of the square wave using pulse width modulation which shifts the point at which the wave steps up and down and it looks and sounds like this this is the mini log This is the microbrutes doing the same thing. Let's have a quick look at the noise oscillator on the mini log, the white noise oscillator, which is very useful for creating percussive sounds and sounds like wind and um, sounds of nature. There are often ways to use multiple oscillators to play one sound, one note for example. So with the microbrute we could turn up the volume of all these different oscillators to get a much richer sound and you can see on the oscilloscope how much more complicated the sound gets once you add all the different oscillators <laughs> 